What's going on, everybody? It is January 27th, Saturday morning. Uh, we've got a slightly interesting slate that I'm not going to be able to pay enough attention to. Uh, six games. Um, just a little State of the Union for this. Um, after I put this video out and the projections are updated, I'm going to be offline most of today, uh, heading out of town. Um, won't be around at lock tonight or anything like that, so... Um, I will try and get projections done for tomorrow morning. Uh, there won't be any videos or anything tomorrow morning. Again, I won't be I won't be home, but we'll be back to normal uh, starting Monday morning. A uh, little look at last night. I finished with three thirteen point two. Um, was good enough to get me over the cut line, so I will take it. Um, Booker getting ejected with two techs didn't exactly help. He another you know ten minutes or so would have been. Would have been nice for him, particularly in a game where you know he might be trying to shoot them back in in the fourth. Uh, Napier ended up a bit of a bust. I'm okay with that. He was 50% owned, but super happy with Rubio, happy with LeBron, super happy with Brandon Ingram. Um, I'm surprised that the Clippers can get to 109 without a better game out of Blake, but that's it's just solid. Uh, and then uh, I'm really, really happy with Cantor, 38 per or 38 fantasy points, 2% owned. Um, that worked out perfect. But you really wanted to have Darren Collison last night. Um, you know, AD was huge. Uh, but the big story coming out all yesterday, uh, DeMarcus Cousins, torn Achilles. Uh, last thing I saw was out 7 to 10 months. Just an absolute bummer sucks so bad for him for the Pels so anxious to see what that does to their season um, you know you can make a really weird case that they could just trade AD and blow it all up and not bring Cousins back and hit the reset button but I feel bad for them but anyway let's get into it now uh, six games and we're starting um, in Indiana. So Pacers, 110 implied total, which would be third. Uh, they are hosting the Orlando Magic, five and a half point favorites. Um, this should be something to pay attention to because the Magic are a bad defensive team. So first up is Oladipo, 9,900 on FanDuel, 9,400 on DK. It's just, it's so incredibly expensive um like even when he has a good game like 49.2 is technically under 5x he hasn't hit that value at all in the past two weeks i it's so hard for me to get there because of that price he's 900 dollars too expensive and i don't really know how to manage something like that he is somebody that has the ability to go off. Like, if you told me that he got 60, nobody would be like, oh, how do you do that? But I anticipate more value throughout the rest of the games. Uh, Thad Young, 6,300 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. Um, we would need 30 and change. He's had 40 in the last two. Wait, am I reading that right? Nope, that was old Depot's line. Ignore that. Uh, 34, 40, 36. You know, he's been pretty good. It's a good matchup for them. Um, I'm not super interested in it because of his price, but it's probably a four. And then we get to one of the interesting pieces, Darren Collison, 5,400 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. He needs 27. Uh, he had a 50-pointer last night. Um, you would think people are going to be sort of chasing that, but it's not so much a chase. The price is just low. A couple 30-point games uh, in the last two weeks, all of those would take him to value. Uh, but between the matchup and the price, uh, Darren, Darren Collison looks really good. And that's a 2 on FanDuel. It's a, it's a 3 on DK. Um, Boyan, I don't have any interest in... 
Corey Joseph on DK is 3,900. You can make a case for that. I'll put him as a DK4. And then uh, the expect, you know, Miles Turner is officially questionable for today. Um, 6,800 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. I don't see him as playable tonight. Wouldn't shock me if he played well, but uh, he's just been so in and out. I can't. That's not a place I want to. I want to go. So we'll head to Orlando then. Uh, Magic 104.5 implied total is seventh. I can't believe Boogie blew out his Achilles. That is so awful. Anxious. Like, how does that? You know, free agency is. It's so important. What kind of deal does he get signed to? I'm sure the you know the Pelicans are a terrible front office. They'll probably just max him, <laughs> which might not be the worst idea. But okay, uh, Magic. Start with Aaron Gordon. Gordon 7,800 on both sites, so you're looking for 40. Um, he's done it once in the past two weeks. Not a ton else that was super interesting. I, I like this game, but I just don't like these guys' prices. I'm going to say he's a fan duel four. I probably wouldn't touch him on DK. You know, he's just a straight four. It's a six game slate. Evan Fournier, 6,200 and 6,300. So you're looking 31. Um, he's right around there every night 29, 31, 29. Can get up to you know a 38er if the shot's falling. It's a decent matchup for them. Indiana does give up uh, a pretty decent chunk of threes, or 28th and three frequency defense. So could be a good spot to have Fournier and hope for the best. Put him at three. Then Alfred Payton, 7,400 on Fanduel, 6,800 on DK. Uh, you know, like him a lot more on DraftKings. Needs 35 plus, 46 last night. Been in the 40s in three of his last five. Um, I'm not super worried about Indiana defense. So I'm going to say that Alfred Payton is a uh, DK3 and a uh, FanDuel 4. Don't totally love that price on FanDuel, but 6,800 is pretty good value for him. And then Jonathan Simmons, I'm I'm okay ignoring. We'll go to Atlanta Hawks, 104 implied total hosting the Washington Wizards. Uh, they are five and a half point favor or underdogs at home. Uh, they have the eighth highest implied total. Uh, Schroeder got benched for the last six minutes and change last night. I don't really know how that's going to affect things today. Um, uh, so I'm <coughs> treating it like it didn't happen, but. Could matter. So first up is Schroeder. 7,300 and 7,200. Um, this isn't really a great matchup for him. He would need 36 or so. Can get there, but after last night, uh, I don't expect him to be someone that you focus on. Torian Prince, 4,800 and 4,600. Uh, you're looking for 25. Um, had a real solid game last night, 27 fantasy points. Put up 29 a couple nights ago, but has the ability to just sink a lineup for you. I'm cautiously optimistic on him tonight. He's just a, a tier four for me. Same probably goes for Bazemore. He needs like 26. Um, he's had a couple 30-point games. Went off last night for 39. I'd say I like him a little bit more than Prince, um, just because Bazemore doesn't have that cratering ability like uh, Prince does. And then we get to Ilyasova, who is 4,100 on FanDuel, needs 20 for value. Uh, he had 24 last night, you know, a stinker the night before, the game before that, but can easily get to 20 and more. Uh, I really like Ilyasova here on FanDuel. Still just a three. Um, I wouldn't want to go too crazy. It is the Hawks. They're not a good team. They've got a tough matchup. But Ilyasova's price is something you would want to focus on. 
and uh, he's a little bit less interesting on DK. Uh, John Collins in the perennial. I'm fine with having John Collins in some way. He's just so hyper efficient. He had 26 in 21 minutes last night. You know that he hit value, um, or at least close to it. Uh, he needs 28 now tonight, 5600, but 5000 on DK. So I think he's probably just a straight three for me. I just want them to play him more, and I don't really have any interest in Bellinelli or Deadman. So now we'll go to Washington. Wizards 109.5 implied total is fourth. I've always wanted that trade to happen where it would be some combo of Boogie for Otto Porter. Then you have Drew, Otto Porter, and uh, AD at the five. But AD hates playing the five so much. It just wouldn't be good. And then Wall, Beal, and Cousins is sort of a better balance of talent. Not going to happen. If you can get Gortat back in that deal, then AD can play like half and half. It's not going to happen now. Okay. Great matchup for Washington. Um, I'm going to probably have... I'm almost assuredly going to have one of Beal or Wall, and it's not entirely out of the realm of possibility that I have them both, which means that I need to look at their correlation now because I am going to be a couple beers deep, close to lock, and uh, not exactly going to be uh, having a ton of thoughts in my head. So Wall and Beal, I think they have like okay correlation together. Yeah, relatively neutral. Check out five by five. This this is a good example. I don't remember who it was last night, but somebody was like a good value, or somebody had a good correlation on one site and not on the other, and that's sort of the same way that I feel about um, the DVP stats. Like it all matters in a way, but you can't just make like wholesale thoughts on it because some sites are going to have different numbers. See, like Beal here is a huge. Um, positive for correlation so I don't know the background of how either of those numbers are being calculated so you have to take it in all holistically all right Bradley Beal 8100 on both sites that means he needs 40 uh, matchup is great he had 67 two nights ago He's gotten to 42 other times in these past two weeks. Yeah, I I just like I really like Beal. John Wall, 9600 on FanDuel, 9500 on DK. So you're looking for you know basically 50, but that's fine. 44. He he's had two 50 point games in the past two weeks. One 48er, which is basically on value for him. Yeah, they both look great. I know that somebody's going to be like, well, if you had to pick one, who would you take, Beal or Wall? Well, the answer is impossible. They're $1,500 difference on FanDuel. I need to know what that $1,500 opens up. So it's got to be Wall plus X versus Beal plus Y. And then it's easier to give that answer. But it, You can't pick two dudes that are in dramatically different price ranges. I've got Wall projected for you know, six more points than Beal, but, you know, I'll take whichever one makes my lineups fit better. Otto Porter is 6,700, so that would be like 33. Um, it's a 140-point game. The rest has been not the best. He hasn't been playing very well. I want to see if that trend has changed. I could probably stretch that out a little bit further now. Pow. I'm probably hanging out over top of it over here somewhere. Uh, auto Porter. Yeah, look at that, man. It's just January 3rd, he fell off a cliff. Tried to recover a little bit, but it's been a weird season for Auto Porter. He's a four just because of this matchup, but I'm not married to the thought of having Auto Porter tonight. Kelly Oubre, on the other hand, 4900 on both sides. What, did FanDuel and DK talk about pricing? Jesus. Almost everybody on Washington's the same. 
Uh, Ubre needs 25. Just hit that twice. Um, he's sort of all over the place, but this is the sort of game that you'd be interested in him. I don't know what kind of run he gets in a blowout. You would think he would get a bit of extra time, but I, it's not something that I've looked into. It'll be a three for me. No interest in Markeith Morris and Gortat. Let's see, Atlanta. They probably wouldn't run it too much. Gortat been playing low minutes. Max of 21 in the past four. I'm going to say this. Gortat at 3,900 is a really interesting sneak GPP play if you think that he gets up to like 25 minutes or so. You can fill a stat sheet. So he's a four for me. There are caveats. Um, <clears throat> sorry, guys. Go to Miami now. The Heat are hosting the Charlotte Hornets. Heat with a 104.5 implied total, which is 7th. Okay. Not a great matchup. Nobody on Miami gets to the line, and Charlotte rarely puts people on the line. Miami, not the best offensive rebounding team. Charlotte, incredible at defensive rebounding. So if my basically the story of this game is if Miami doesn't hit their first shot, they're fucked because <laughs> they're not going to get an offensive rebound, and apparently they're not going to the stripe. So, all right, Josh Richardson, sixty five hundred and sixty two hundred. The assumption is Tyler Johnson will be playing. Um, I don't really love Josh Richardson at 6,500. That's uh, 32. He gets in and around there, so it's not something that I'm just like super against. But he's a four. Wayne Ellington, 5,000 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. Remember the days like six weeks ago or so when Wayne was minimum salary? I was thinking about taking him. God, the good old days. Now he's just like good. I'm gonna sign a, a big deal this year. You know, big deal for Wayne. He'll get, like, a decent chunk of somebody's mid-level over a couple of years. Probably Miami. Needs 25. Uh, hit it in the last one. Had another one at 25. Had a 32-point game. Um, Charlotte does tend to give up a couple extra threes, so I like him in a GPP setting in that, you know, you're betting on those shots to go in, and if that's the case, then you want to take the guy that's the best shooter. Uh, Dragic is uh, 7200 and too highly priced. Tyler Johnson is 5600 and 5100 on DK. That would be 28. Hasn't played in four games. Um, don't love the price. Not going to try to force that. Whiteside, 9000 on FanDuel. 7600 on DraftKings, which is like... <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Um, he would need 45 on FanDuel, which is basically the same as his 6x price on DK. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with Whiteside on FanDuel, or on DraftKings at that price. I won't, I wouldn't touch him at 9,000. It's really all that I want here. Uh, it's just not a good matchup for Miami. To the Hornets now. Hornets 100 point implied total is 12th. That's dead last on the slate. So, sort of the inverse. Hornets third at getting to the line. Miami puts people on the line a ton, so... Makes Dwight Howard and Kemba a little bit more interesting from a matchup perspective. Uh, but Miami, pretty good defensively in fantasy. So this isn't really a game that I think should be a focus of anybody. Uh, Kemba Walker, 8,300 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. You know, you're looking for 40 and change from Kemba. He hit it in the last one. He hits it relatively regularly. 
I don't love the matchup. Um, I like him a little bit more on DK, so he's probably a DK3 and a FanDuel 4. There's just there's just too much other value out there. I'd rather pay up a little bit more for Wall in a really great matchup. Or have Beal at shooting guard and go some other direction at point guard cheap. Uh, Dwight Howard is 9900 on FanDuel. I mean, granted, he put up... Look, at, at some point in time, the price is going to justify it. But right now, he's 9900 on FanDuel. He had 60 last night. Before that, it was 50, 50, 45, 50, 50. Uh, like, he's been hitting value in basically six straight so it's incredible but he's still Dwight Howard and these projections aren't made on you know a week's worth of data it's years worth of data and uh it's not like Dwight Howard is in a position where he's starting to come into form um I won't touch Dwight Howard on FanDuel I don't think that it's a great play now, Dwight Howard on DraftKings on the other hand where he's priced at 8,000 yeah so Dwight Howard's 6x price on DraftKings is 48, which is less than his 5x price on FanDuel. Uh, Dwight Howard is a 2 on DraftKings. Almost a 1. Did he... Did Whiteside, like, beast all over him, like, a week or two ago? Or was it the other way around? Like, I feel like this game just happened. You'd be surprised to know that uh, every single day just blends together in my brain now. Okay, they did just play. This will be their fourth game. Dwight put up 45 against him in the most recent one. Did Whiteside go ham? Is that what it was? No, nope, I don't know what I'm thinking of. I don't know. Anyway, Dwight looks great on DK. That's that's the story. Uh, Batum is 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,800 on DK. Needs 30. Hit it in the last one. It's had a couple others. Um, he's a four. I don't, you know, the prices aren't the best. Next two are pretty much DK uh, focuses. Marvin Williams, 4,600 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. Um, you need like 23. He's been playing well lately. He's been playing more lately. So let's do Marvin Williams as a FanDuel 4 and a DraftKings 3. Um, we'll look at MKG 4,900 and 4,100. Michael Kidd, Gilchrist, FanDuel 4. Put up 34 fantasy points last night. Um, the price is just super interesting. Again, DK3. Lots to like on Charlotte as filler, um, especially on DK. Next up, Golden State Warriors hosting the Boston Celtics. Game of the night. Uh, Warriors are... Why can't I do that math? All those fucking decimals. Eight and a half point favorites. 111.25 implied total is second. Um, both of these teams, are, well, Boston, very good as a defensive fantasy team. So I don't know there's going to be a ton here that I love, but we'll see. It's all about price. Need a sip of coffee. Um <clears throat> Warriors, number one in effective field goal percentage and on offense. Boston, number one defending it. So, that's interesting. Okay. Clay Thompson, 6,600, 6,100 on DK. Not a great matchup for Clay, but he only needs 33 for value. He's done that three times a 38 or a 46er and a 37 point game. Um, he's a he's a three for me on DK, a four for me on Fanduel. That sixty one hundred price tag is tasty. 
especially with that extra hook for uh, for threes. Draymond, <clears throat> 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. You know, you're looking for 40. Hasn't done it in the last two, but prior to that, he had three of four. Um, I think this is a good Draymond Green game. Uh, to me, he's just a three. Durant is 10-5 on FanDuel, 10-3 on DraftKings. Here's one I don't super-duper love. Um, he needs 50-something, which he gets there, but he's just a four for me. Steph, on the other hand, is a FanDuel three for me. Um, 9,500. I think this could be decent for them. Uh, no Marcus Smart for the Celtics. But it's just, you know, it's not a game where... Um, it's not a game where offense should be a, a peak priority here. Defense is going to be on point. Or at least I would think it would be. To Boston we go. Celtics 102.75 total is 10th. Uh, this game does not have a line yet. This is uh, made up on my part. But, you know, I'll be in the ballpark. Okay. Horford is 6,700 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. How much has Horford's price gone down? hundred bucks it's legit um you know you're looking for 35 out of horford gets there from time to time missed the last one um comfortable saying that he's a three though Kyrie, 8700 um so you're looking 43 he's been picking it up a little bit lately Let's see what that chart looks like. Yeah, he's, he's had a little bit of an upturn lately, but he's just he's been super steady um, for the past two months. I'm not really interested in Kyrie here, but he's got history. What I want to look at would be Jason Tatum at 5,000. He would need 25. Um, he's hit that in three of his last five. So I'm fine with that there. Uh, Marcus Morris, 4,600 would be 23. He's okay. I don't... It, completely uninteresting. Uh, the, the person you need to look at would be, at least on FanDuel, is Terry Rozier. Uh, Rozier should be seeing some extra minutes with Marcus Smart out. He's 3,800 on FanDuel. Um, on FanDuel, he's a 2. Uh, Rozier needs 20 to hit value. Hit 30 in the last one in 24 minutes. <clears throat> Dude's an exceptional rebounder for a guard. Uh, has, has ways to fill the stat sheet. Um, that are more so than, uh, than most. And at 3,800, you'd be crazy not to have him. Uh, he's a four on DK. It's a, it's a pretty big gap. That thirty eight hundred dollar price point is is massive. I'd be very very surprised if I didn't end up with Terry Rozier in one of my lineups. I think we'll see that on the optimization. To Denver now. Uh, Nuggets one hundred eight point two five implied total is fifth. Eight point favorites at home against the Dallas Mavericks. Let's take a look at the Nuggies. So off to see Joe Rogan tonight and uh, do some stand-up. Kind of excited about that. All right, Nuggies. 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK for Gary Harris. I am not super interested in that. Harris would need 35 for value. He's hit it a couple times on the dot. One big 45-point game. Um, Dallas, not the best defensively on a position basis for the season, but uh, recently uh, been pretty damn good on a per minute basis. Not really sure how to take that. Um, ultimately, I'm just not interested in Gary Harris. Jamal Murray, 7,100. I don't think I have a ton of interest in that either. Two monster games recently, other than, but like, 
before that wasn't very good. Um, I don't love the prices here, so that's a pass for me. I will look at Will Barton, 6,500 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. You're looking at 32 for Barton. Um, three straight games in the 20s was just kind of a bummer for him, but you know he has the ability to fill up a sheet as well. Uh, I'll say Will Barton is actually just a three for me. And then there'll be a couple others that we want to look at. Uh, like Jokic, for example, 9,600 on FanDuel, 8,900 on DK. Um, I think this is a really good game for Jokic. I'm anxious to see what his history is against the Mavs. Put up 65 on them in the most recent game a week and a half ago. I would, you know, has, has gone off on them before. I think this is a good matchup for Jokic. Um, but 9,600 is a, is a big number. He needs 48. Um, hasn't done it since that game. Had 48 in the game prior to that as well. That, it's a place where I'm willing to get. Uh, I think Jokic is in line for a big game. Um, he's probably going to be a little chalky to the to the general crowd for seeing his previous game against them, but I think it's just a good matchup. Uh, Wilson Chandler is a four for me on DK only, simply because of the price. Um, I feel the same way about Trey Lyles, DK only four. And then Mason Plumley, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. You're looking for like 27 from Plumley. He's put up 30 in his past, over 30 in his past two and a 40 pointer um, four games ago. Seems to be getting, I don't know, something seems to be different with them ever since they said that uh, they were gonna play Jokic more at the five. Plumley's been stepping up at the five. Um, can't go crazy because I don't have him projected for enough minutes, but I could see this being a decent Mason Plumley game. He's still just a four for me because of price. To the Mavs, uh, Mavs 100.25 implied total is 11th, uh, basically the worst on the slate. You know what we didn't do? What's NBA Wowie Marcus Smart? So, Marcus Smart. Circling back to the Celtics here for a quick second. Whoops, missed Marcus Smart's first two letters of his name. Sorry, he's crazy enough to stab me for it. Um, everybody is just worse, except for Terry Rozier. So, okay. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. Or see, I guess. Oh, yeah. Mavs. Okay. Harrison Barnes, 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. You're looking at 33. You know, he gets there. Pretty regularly. Denver, not exactly a difficult matchup for him. Um, only problem is sort of playing at elevation. What's Harrison Barnes' history against the Nugs? You know, he's right around value both games. He's a three. He's just a perfectly functional basketball player for tonight. Uh, West Matthews, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,500 on DK. I don't really have much interest there. Has the ability to go off, but you need him to get to like 27. Um, and he's so boom bust. I don't think this is the spot where he booms. Could be wrong. Yogi Ferrell, 4,800 and 4,600. Looking for 25. Um... I'm rarely a big Yogi Ferrell fan, but he's a four for me tonight. Dennis Smith, 6,600 FanDuel, 6,300 on DK. You're looking for 33. Uh, he's done that in four of six. I think this is a great spot for him. 
Um, he's a... He might even be a... No. How crazy am I? Um, he's probably just a three. I don't know how much upside is in him. Dirk, 4,800 and 4,600. He's been uh, neutered lately, lower minutes, so I'm going to ignore him. J.J. Barea, 4,400 and 4,500. Also been, uh, you know, neutered lately, so again, I'm ignoring him. They're going to pop up in the optimizer because they're hella efficient, but I don't love it. Dwight Powell, 3,700. Again, not getting the minutes that you would like him to get, so they're all just a pass. Last game, Timberwolves hosting the Nets. I've got the Wolves as 10-point favorites at home, the number one implied total on the night. This line is not out yet. So let's look at the Wolves. And uh, my assumption is that Jimmy Butler is playing. Okay, so uh, if Jimmy Butler is playing, he is 9,000 on FanDuel, 9,200 on DK, and I like Jimmy Butler a lot. Um, he's a three. I would kind of focus on him, though. Andrew Wiggins is a three. It's just a really good matchup for them. Fits exactly what they try to do. Taj, 5,800 on both sites. You need 30 out of him. He's had 30 in multiple games recently. Again, just a three. None of these guys stand out because of price, but they all stand out for matchup. Carl Anthony Towns, though. 9,600 on FanDuel, 9,800 on DK. Uh, you're looking for just under 50. 49 in the last one. Um, had a 66-pointer, and that was with Butler. He has the ability to get up there, and uh, I think that he personally is a a perfect player to take tonight. He's actually a two to me. Love Towns. Teague at 6,500 is probably a little bit too high. He needs 32. He's done it in two of three. Actually, four of eight. Um, everybody looks good here on the number one implied total team against the team. Not really the best defensively. And uh, if you think this game could get a little wonky, keep an eye on Gorgeous Dong, Gorgie Zhang. Uh, if he can get a couple extra minutes or something in garbage time, Brooklyn not exactly a defensive stalwart. So Finally, we'll look at the Nets. Uh, Nets 103 implied total is ninth. What do we got? So, Rondé Hollis Jefferson is 6,500 6, on FanDuel, 6,000 on DK. Um, he, like, rolled an ankle or something last night, right? Ah, groin. Groin. So, keep an eye on him. Um, hold on, what was that news? Ooh. Details of sexual assault inside the men's basketball and football programs at Michigan State. Good luck with that. I probably shouldn't go put my Michigan State shirt on now. Uh, I don't, I'm not gonna, I'm just going to ignore Hollis Jefferson. If he doesn't play, you know, that'll make Joe Harris, Damari Carroll look a little bit better for tonight. Um... I don't really see anything here that is interesting, except for maybe Karis Levert, uh, 4,800. You're looking for 25 out of Levert. Hasn't really done it, but has the ability to. Lesvert. Just a four, but there's no value on this team right now. Not a great matchup. Late game, 
Um, so you might not even have news on Rondé Hollis Jefferson if if he becomes like a game time decision. Um, that's not the place where you're gonna find winners. So let's go ahead and uh, check the optimizer. There we go. And obviously, I didn't talk about the uh, the Oklahoma City Detroit game at five o'clock because it's not really a part of the slate. What do we get? A lot of Beal so far, a lot of Rozier, a lot of Tatum, a lot of Jimmy Butler, a lot of Towns. All of that makes me very, very happy in the pants. Draymond, Wiggins, Bazemore, Wall, Oubre, Collins. Turns out I'm going to make 100 lineups that I like. Didn't see that coming. This is also going incredibly slow, which is kind of weird. Ugh, I know why. Stop. Somebody didn't randomize the projections. Wah, wah. I'll speed it up a little bit. There we go. Now we got a honey spot. So, right off the bat, this is telling me I should look at Beal, which is fine. I should look at Rogier, which is fine. That also leads me to Butler, which is fine. Um, I, just, I like all of these. It's basically just a focus on a couple teams, which is obvious in a six game slate, but I don't like I just like this stuff. It's hard not to take towns, which then leads me to I got wall and well, I got Rogier already. Am I missing anybody obvious? Okay, Towns and Jokic are both 9,600. Um, I would prefer Towns. I would feel safer with Towns. Um, I guess we want to take Ubre. So, something in that area doesn't look too shabby as a placeholder. Let's check out DraftKings now. Don't have the same feel for how this is going to pop up. We'll do 50. Where do we go? Yeah, no surprise there. Tons of John Collins. A lot of white side. So, yeah, I would start with white side probably, which would lead me to Beal. And then, um, probably John Collins. MKG. Oh, I wouldn't want that one with Berea. So probably that middle one, but that ends up with three Hawks, which isn't really um, an optimal scenario. But, so I would probably want to back off of Collins. So we would want Beal, Whiteside, MKG. Whiteside. Beal. MKG. Oh, Collins is in every one of those then. What about, oh, I didn't realize Wall was so high. So let's say Wall, Whiteside, MKG. I can mess with that. Corey Joseph, Barton, MKG, Collins, Whiteside, Wall, Draymond, Dennis Smith. All right, that's the end of it for me, guys. Um, like I said, after I sign off of this video and post the projections, I won't be able to touch him again today, or at least I don't believe that I will. 
I'll be offline for most of the day. Um, so good luck tonight. Um, I will try to put out some news on Twitter if I see it. So um, check that out. But other than that, uh, best of luck to you. Have a good weekend. And I will see you this face again Monday morning. Bye-bye.